Hello everyone and welcome back to the next tutorial for the OpenM. This one is going to be on Pixie booting. I had um, one user request this video, so um, here we are. So it's pretty, um, Pixie booting is pretty simple. Um, as I mentioned in my Getting Started series, um, I don't actually recommend it. I prefer to use the USB boot method, um, but if anyone really wants to Pixie boot, here's how you do it. Um, log in to your the OpenM uh, web interface. Select settings and Pixie, and then Pixie settings. I'm going to show two methods. Show two methods in here: one using proxy DHCP and one without it. Um, so initially, uh, we'll do um, without. I'll select um, IPXE EFI 64 since I'll be demoing a um, EFI system at first. Actions update. It'll ask us if we want to create the um, boot files. And yes, we would like to go there now. Once we're redirected, we'll select Actions and Create Boot Files. And essentially what that's doing is creating the default Pixie boot file on the OpenM comm server. Enter um, C program files, the OpenM TFTP boot, Pixie Linux.config, and default.ipxe. Now that that file is there, um, our clients should be able to read it and do a Pixie boot. Uh, one thing to note is that a TFTP server was already installed when you installed the OpenM, so there's nothing else to configure other than your DHCP server. Uh, for this demo, I'm just using a um, just a basic DHCP server that's installed. That's not even installed. It's just I'm going to run it on this machine. Um, you might be using Windows DHCP or some other variant. There's really only two things you need to do. Um, you want to set your boot file and your next server. Um, if you're using Windows DHCP, it's going to be options 66 and 67. The boot file is always going to be bxe boot.0, never changes. And your next server is going to be the IP address of your comm server. Or if you have only one, the OpenM server, just be the IP address of that server. I'm going to go ahead and fire up that DHCP server. And we will start a VM. Not that one. Continue with our test PC. Verify it's on the right network. Yes, yeah, student. Boot for network adapter first. All right, let's see what happens. Here we are, pixieboot.0, transferred it, and here's our pixieboot menu. Pretty simple. So the problem here uh, with not using uh, the proxy DHCP is what happens now if we want to boot a uh, legacy BIOS system. So what's going to happen is it's going to try to serve up a, uh, a boot file that's meant for an EFI system, and it's just not going to work. Here we go. MVP is too big to fit in free based memory. That's just another way of saying that this isn't uh, this isn't an EFI machine. It's not going to boot. In order to get this legacy BIOS machine to boot, we'd have to go back to PXE settings, change this to something legacy that's not EFI, like PXE Linux, for example. Update, recreate our boot files, and let's try booting again. There we are, no issue. So the problem with that is you don't want to continuously switch back and forth between legacy boot files and EFI boot files every time you want to do a Pixie boot. And that's where the proxy DHCP comes into play. Um, so I have created one called um, Tomes Proxy DHCP that's available on the openm.com. You can grab that for free. And it's just a simple um, EXE that you can either install or run in the console when needed. In order to do that, uh, you'll go to PXE settings, set using proxy to yes, and you'll select your different um, bootloaders for either BIOS EFI32 or EFI64. I usually like to use PXE Linux for legacy systems. I just find that works a little better than IPXE sometimes. All 
All right, make sure I created my boot files. I don't remember. I wasn't paying attention if I recreated the boot files or not. There we are. Now we'll go back to our DHCP server. So the advantage to using the proxy is you actually don't need these settings. Boot file and next server, you don't need to do anything with them. So your existing DHCP server, you actually don't even need to touch it. However, um, in this demo, I am running my DHCP server and the proxy on the same server, which is going to be a problem. Um, so whenever you install the proxy, just make sure you put it somewhere on your network that's not your DHCP server. For example, if you're running Windows DHCP server, you just don't install a proxy there. Put it on any other server. If you typically need to use an IP helper to get to your DHCP server, you'll want to add an additional IP helper to the proxy server IP address. Um, so if you've only got you know a, a flat network, um, you may not need that. But if you're doing any type of routing and you've only got one DHCP server, you're going to need to add that IP helper in there. So in my example here, since they're both running on the same machine, I have to add one other extra option on my DHCP server. You won't need to do this. Close this down. I'll start it again. So now we're not serving any boot file information from the DHCP directly. We'll handle that with the Tomes proxy right here. And there's a couple options you want to set in config.ini. Not too many. Um, first one is the interface that you're going to bind to. So this machine, um, the IP address of this machine I'm currently on is 56.1. So that's what it's going to bind to. Uh, you can put 0.0.0.0, .0 if you'd like, to bind to all of them. And you'll fill in the next server, which again is the IP address of your comm server. And the rest of the options, you can just leave them to their defaults. You can fill in the comp server URL if you want, um, but there's really not a whole lot of benefit to doing that yet. Those features will be coming later. And from here, we'll start our proxy service. Now this can be installed, or you can just run it manually. I'll just run it manually for now, dash dash debug. Now if I go to our EFI system, There we are. It was received the um, the correct EFI bootloader from the proxy. You can see the proxy um, noticed it was a proxy pixie boot for EFI system. And now let's start the legacy BIOS. And this time it got the legacy bootloader without needing to change anything else in the open end. You can see from the boot here, it was just a Intel x86, which just means it's a legacy boot. Okay, that does it. That should be, um, that's the end of this video. Uh, it's pretty simple. That's how you do a Pixie boot with the open again. The Open M. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.